What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Looking at the new Dark Lord monsters Konami is going to be releasing and Booster SP Destiny Soldiers, which is pretty interesting. I'm surprised that they're bringing Dark Lords back after all of these years. If you guys don't know what Dark Lords were, um, they were kind of like this old fairy archetype. They're dark. They're super high levels. A lot of them had like 3,000 or like 28, 2,900 attack and whatnot. They were very powerful, but they weren't exactly the easiest things in the world to summon, so they were never really that competitive. The only good ones, in my opinion, were really like Superbia and Zerato. Zerato was pretty big in actually dad return format because you could banish it and then summon it with... Um with either return from a different dimension or more commonly dimension fusion and then it was just a regeki you just otk your opponent because you generally summon genzo at the same time and then superbia was good because it could summon christia like you could call the haunted it and then you'd get a christia for free and basically like those two cards once you had them on the board unless your opponent had a regeki it's basically gg so destiny soldiers is the new it's kind of like another booster pack very similar to wing raiders or high speed riders that revolves around arc v it revolves around characters in the anime so i assume every Everything in this set is going to be played by characters in the anime, which means somebody in the anime has to be playing this. Um, maybe it's the professor from the fusion dimension. I don't know. You know what I mean? And uh, by the way, Satawari's uh, Abyss actors are in this too, but I don't really care about those. So anyways, I'm much more excited about the new Dark Lords because uh, reading these three cards effect, they seem pretty damn powerful. And there should be confirmation that they're getting spells and traps too because the other two, um, they all revolve around spells and traps as well. So they should not only be just getting monsters, but spells and traps, which they did not have in the you know back in the day when they first released the Dark Lord. So let's look at them. First up, we have Dark Lord Lucifer. Level 11, 3,000 attack and defense cannot be special summoned, so bust out those Monarch Storm Force boys. Uh, effect number one, if this card is tribute summoned, you can special summon any number of Dark Lord or Fallen One monsters from your hand and or deck, up to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls. Uh, that seems really, really potentially broken. Because it just seems like it could be very, very easy to OTK if you have like a Regeki. Because the thing about these guys is these guys are like 25, 28, 3,000. Like they're very fucking strong. I mean, it, very, it seems like you could distribute some in this and your opponent has two random effect monsters. You get this out, you get this out, Regeki them, and then you just OTK. So it seems like potentially playing with fire there. Effect number two, when you control another Dark Lord or Fallen One monster, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Okay, card effects, being able to target, man, they're just taking it out the game, guys, slowly but surely. <laughs> Effect number three, once per turn, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard for each Dark Lord or Fallen One monster you control, and if you do, gain 500 life points for each Dark World or Fallen One card sent to the graveyard by this effect. Okay, so you've got um, an Excavate effect. Uh, hey, man, Splash and some wolves man more sacking right <laughs> that's fine i i, I kind of like ways of gaining i like ways of gaining life points there just aren't enough of them in Yu-Gi-Oh. and a lot of the like old fairies had like life point gains attached to them going all the way back to marie the fallen one which was an original Yu-Gi-Oh card but yeah man more ways to gain life points is always a good thing so this card so far seems very legitimate um then we have dark lord x tab this is, she is level 10, she's a dark fairy, 2500 attack, 2900 defense, their defenses are very high as well, I just noticed that, a lot of their defenses are really high, you can only special summon one dark lord x tab once per turn, and you can only use each effect of dark lord x tab once per turn, this effect number one is ridiculous, ridiculous like this shit is oh my what were they thinking when they made this you can discard both this card and and one dark lord or fallen one card draw two cards basically while in the hand this bitch is a destiny draw with another dark lord or fall what the fuck it's a monster that has a that has a hand effect that's a destiny. Oh my god. Could you imagine if like Necroz would have had some shit like that? Like you could discard your Valk and another Necroz and draw two. Like that is insane. So this card will never ever really be dead in your hand. Because if you have two, you know, Dark Lords and you can't summon them, just destiny draw them to the graveyard and draw two cards and then soul charge them back or some shit like that. That's really good. Now the on-field effect is once per turn, uh, excuse me, during either player's turn, um, you can pay 1,000 life points, then target one Dark Lord spell or trap in your graveyard. This card's effect, or excuse me, this effect becomes that target's effect. Um, when that card is activated, then shuffle that target into the deck. Okay, so basically, 
Um, if there is a Dark Lord spell or trap in the graveyard, you target it and then you copy the effect and then you shuffle that card back into your deck for a thousand life points. Worse during both players' turn, which is kind of scary, but I mean, for this not to be amazing, like the Dark Lord spells and traps have to be trash. Like they have to be absolutely trash. Otherwise, this effect will just be ridiculous. This card seems actually like it's even, it could be even better than this one. Because like Destiny Draw in the hand, that's fucking insane. And then lastly, we have Dark Lord. Oh my god, I'm dreading having to pronounce this name. Uh, Tez Cat Lapoca. <laughs> I'm not saying that again. Tez Catlapoka. I probably butchered that. This is a level 9 Dark Fairy. 2800 attack, 2100 defense. You can only special summon one of this guy once per turn. And you can only use the two effect um, once per turn. The reason why you can only special uh, one of these guys per turn is because... They don't want you being able to use Lucifer and special summoning two copies of either one of these guys. They want you to run all of them so that you can't go, you know, summon two of X tabs in one turn. They don't want you to be able to do that, which is kind of understandable considering, you know, how much attack these guys have. So anyways, he is 2800, 2100, um, effect number one. Uh, if a Dark Lord or Fallen One monster you control would be destroyed, or monsters, by the way, excuse me, uh, by card effect or by battle, you can discard this card instead. Okay, so it's basically like a little protection effect against battle and just any type of destruction. And then effect number two, which is pretty much the same as X-Tab. Uh, during each player's turn, you can pay 1,000 light points, target a Dark Lord, Speller Trap in your graveyard, discards, become that effect. Um, when the effect activates, shuffle that target into the deck. So the Dark Lord spells and traps are obviously going to be pretty important to this deck because a lot of their monsters copy the effects of the um, you know spell and trap. So We'll have to see where this archetype is going when Konami reveals the spells and traps. So far, I think it's way better than the old Dark Lord shit. I mean, these seem like they can OTK. They seem like they've got good hand effects. They can be used during both players' turns. The potential is a lot higher than the old one. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always.